today we're going to talk about completing the square. Yeah, make a pile of your homework. Two piles, just like the journal homework. Thank you. chose that one because yesterday was really something that we had done and that transmuted fairly easily without me going over a lot of stuff, right? It is different. Is it difficult? No. Yes. Mostly. Maybe. This one's a hard one to say. Some people find it hard and some people don't. So it's kind of hard to say if this one's going to be hard or not, okay? So. I have not produced. Our goal is to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. Completing the square. And why? So we can find the base ball's maximum height as an example. So that this is an example, not a problem. So you can find the height of the ball. I don't think I put any squares on it. I know you guys just love square problems. We're not going to complete the square yet. We're just going to solve this by finding square roots. In order to do this, I need to factor it. So what does x squared plus 20x plus 100 factor to be? x plus 10, right? x plus 10 times x plus 10. I can actually write that as x plus 10 squared, correct? Okay, equals 81. Does that look okay so? Same thing times the same thing as squared, right? How do you undo a square? Square root it. So I'm going to square root. Oops. 
square root of x plus 10 squared is what? x plus 10 equals, oops, that should be up here, plus or minus, what's the square root of 81? 9. And now what do I do? I subtract 10. And x will equal 9 plus, 9 minus 10, which is and negative 9 minus 10. Is that one okay? Yep. The concern is that these are both pluses. They both have to be pluses in here. Oh, in here, this is plus. It's always, if you have a square root, it's always plus or minus. Both. Because what's the square root, uh, I mean, what's 9 squared? What's negative 9 squared? There's two answers to get me to 81, right? Positive 9 and negative 9. Yes. So there's two ways to get to that square root. Yes. Because how do you undo a square? You square root it. Okay? Because isn't this just 9 squared? So that would be 9. So it's just the square root of x plus 10. Okay? Everyone okay? Any other questions? Yes? Okay, well, this factor is true, right? x plus 10 times x plus 10. 100 is 10 times 10. And 10 plus 10 is 20. And then I can rewrite 10, 10 plus x plus 10 times x plus 10 is x plus 10 squared, right? The same thing times the same thing is a square. So that's how I got that. So try this one. Oh, we need to do something. Oh, no, we don't have to do anything with that one. Because they're perfect squares on both ends. is 20x, right? You want the factors of 100 to add up to be 20. Isn't that 10 plus 10? Okay. So this one factors to be what? Anybody know? 3x and 3x. And what's the fourth factor to be? 2 and 2. We know we, they're going to have to be identical, right, already? Because I have to solve it by finding a square root, so that means it needs to be what? Squared. Really? What's 2 times 3? And what's 2 times 3? And what's 6 plus 6? Okay? So this is 3x minus 2 squared equals negative 3. What do I do now? Square root them. Do I do I need a does anyone have
have any questions why I fasted it this way and how, how it is that before we go on? Yes. If they're perfect squares, the first and the last number are perfect squares, and the first one's negative, last one's positive, or they're both positive, you, you just take your perfect square and put it at either end of the parenthesis. Okay. Because a negative times a negative has to be a. No, then I would get a positive 12. Okay? Yes. Okay, what's 2 times 3? And 3 times 2? And 6 plus 6 is? Okay. Any other questions? root it, so I've got 3x minus 2 equals, oh, what's the square root of negative 3? Not 3i. Okay. What's the square root of 3? i square root of 3. Okay, right? Yeah, it is plus The inside the square root, yeah, because the i is negative square root of one, right? Okay. Now what do I need to do? Plus two. And then I get three x equals two plus or minus i square root of three. Everyone okay with that? I'm going to solve for x, so i got to add 2 to both sides. Negative square root is what? What we did last time in class. i is a negative square root of 1. So this is the square root of negative 1 times 3. So this is i, and then I have the square root of 3. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I was pretty on the nose there. Okay. And then what do I do? Divide by 3. X equals 2 plus or minus I square root of 3 divided by 3. That's it. still have two answers because I have 2 plus i squared to 3 over 3 and 2 minus i squared to 3 over 3. So there's two answers there because it says plus or minus. But I don't have to write them both out because I can put plus or minus. Our concept, our key concept today is completing the square. That's not even completing the square. That's just solving quadratics using square roots. And that only works if we factor and it's a perfect square trinomial. So this will work for everything else. And actually it works for perfect square trinomials too. Okay? And it says to complete the square for the expression x squared plus bx, we add b over c squared. And I'm going to show you completing the square for this square. And it's just this one. So if I can draw the picture, I can draw that dot that I got. Okay. You guys have used, um, how many of you guys have used algebra tiles before? Okay, so this is kind of where it's going to come from. This is x times x. That gives me, what is this? x squared, right? And then if this is b, 
That's not a square. I want to make a square. Okay, I want my area to be a completing the square. So how do I am I going to make a square? Well, I'm going to cut this in half, and I'm going to add it down here. So this is B, and that's S. Okay, so this half is gone. And it got moved down here, right? If I want to make a square, what do I have to do? I have to fill in, although it doesn't look like a square either because I were both rawer, obviously. Okay? It's supposed to be square. And how? what would this part be? What is this part? This is B over 2, right? Did I cut it in half? So this part, if we use our multiplication chart, is b over 2, b over 2 times b over 2, b over 2 squared. Because I cut b in half, right? I took half of b and moved it down. Yeah. This, well, this is where this came from. Yes, we always cut b in half. So b is whatever is with so I'm always going to cut it in half and square it. Always. No. You do not have to draw the picture. And I know my picture really sucks because it probably needs to be about this much shorter. Yes. And then you would square it. Okay. Yeah, which we're going to do. So if we do a problem that says find C so we complete the square, what is my B? So I have X squared plus BX. So B equals 14. So what does it say I'm supposed to do to B? Divide it in two and then square it. That's what C is supposed to equal. So what is 14 divided by 2? And 7 squared is 14. And then they want me to write it as an expression of the square. So this would be x plus 7. That's it. Yeah, divide by 2 and square it. That's it. That's it. There's a little bit more, but yes. 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 Well, C is my, is this part right here. Sorry, this isn't B. B is only 14. I should have written this lower. So B equals 14, right? So to complete the square, that's B, so C is going to be equal B half squared. That's what C is going to be. Is that better? Sorry. So that's 14 half squared. Okay? I thought that when I wrote it, but then I thought, no, that's okay. So B, decide, B is what? The 
not 9, negative 9. Okay? So t is going to be equal to negative 9 over 2 squared. So how do we square fractions? Just do what? Yeah, we have to square both of them. Okay? We square the top and the bottom. What's negative 9 squared? Squared, not square rooted. <laughs> 81. And 2 squared is 4. So that's what t is. So my perfect square would actually be x minus 9 halves squared. Yeah, so you, you're going to actually have to do both. You'll have to do this one. That's what t is. And then they want you to write this part out also. So this is a perfect square. Remember on the, when we factor, if I multiply this out, I'm just going to add this. Okay, so this is x. We'll do it with fraction even. x minus 9 times x minus 9 half, sorry. I should get x minus 9 times 81 fourths, right? If I factor this out. So what's x times x? And x times negative 9 halves. Negative 9 times x. Negative 9 halves x is negative 9 halves x, right? And negative 9 halves times negative 9 halves is. And what's negative 9 halves minus 9 halves? They're both negative, so I've got to be something. Not 18 over 4. Which is what? X squared minus 9X. Negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. Right? So then I get my equation up here. It's factoring the perfect square. Trinomial. This is this, that, this is the same as this, right? They want you to write the expression in the square of the binomial. How did I know this is what it is? So this is the square here, perfect square here. X, the perfect square of t is negative 9 halves. Just like on this one, the perfect square of x is, x squared is x, the perfect square of 49 is 10. And if I multiplied this out the same way, I would get x squared plus 14x plus 2. These are perfect squares. That's what we're making. We're making a perfect square. Yes. Okay. Sorry, my picture should have been a little bit better because it should have been a perfect square. That's what we're making is perfect squares. Okay. And look how they draw in front of this. You can barely draw a straight line. Okay. And this is the hard concept to understand is it does make a perfect square. So... We're just putting in the perfect squares on each end, and then we foil them out or distribute them out. It gives me the simple square, and that's why it works. We did do that. We took care of that. When I, I multiplied this out, right, isn't negative 9x in here? Right? Right. This is this, is this factor. So that they want me to solve it by completing the square. Yes, did you have a question? Freaked me out. Okay, now we're going to solve it by completing the square. This is not, it is a perfect square. It's going to have a perfect square on both ends, right? X squared and 4, 4 perfect squares. What happens if I factor it out? Will I get a 6? No, because 2 times 2 is 4, and I'd need a 4 in the middle. So that doesn't work, right? So I can't do a, a solve it by square root. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my 4, I'm going to just move it over to the other side and get it out of the way. So I have just x squared plus bx. So I'm going to minus 4. And then I have x squared plus 6x plus something. I'm going to put something in there, right? I'm going to complete the square and put something in there. Equals negative 4. So I want to complete the square on this side. So my b is 6, and I, what do I do to that 6? Divide by 2 and, and square it, so what do I get? 9. So this becomes x squared plus 6x plus 9. If I add something to one side of the equal sign, what do I have to do? Add it to the other side. Okay, b equals 6, right? So my C is going to equal 6 divided by 2 squared. And we have to square it. Okay. My B is 6, right? Just like on the last screen, I'm going to take my B and divide it by 2, and then square it. Right? So now I have, what, does it, what is this? Yeah. That's okay. Come on, honey. Come on. Yeah, we don't change that. Did we change it on the other one? No, we only changed it once. Okay. What is this factored? My perfect square, x plus 3 squared equals what? What does it equal? Five. Okay. Now what am I going to do? Go root. Just like what we did at the beginning. I don't understand your question. Hold on. Right. I not nine x, just nine. That's my last number. Is you just leave it. Yes. Okay. Well, when we're solving something, if you do something to one side of the equation in order to keep it balanced, what do you have to do? Do the same to the other side. So if I'm going to add a number to one side of the equation, I have to add it to the other side so it stays balanced, right? Okay? Okay, Carla, what don't you understand? And don't say all of it. Do you get how we did this? Do you remember the little equation we said that said b over 2 squared? That's where we got the two. I didn't get the three from the, what do you mean the three, this three? I didn't get that three from the six. I factored this. You know how to factor, right? We did that. What times what is x squared? What times what, what do I, what times what equals nine? that I add together to get 6. x plus 3 times x plus 3 is x plus 3 squared. So do I have to do this every time? Because when I complete the square, this is what this is every single time. It's x plus the square root of this number squared. How do I get the, yeah, I got minus 4 because I added 9 to this side. If you add something to one side of the equation, you have to do the 
same thing, so minus 4 plus 9 is 5. So now I have squares. How do I solve it? Square root it. And so I get x plus root equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Am I done? Is my x by itself? Because we got the 9 from this number. If this number was different, then I wouldn't get a 9. I'd get something different. But we get the 9 from this number. I take this number, divide by 2, and square it. Are you sure? The number with x, you take it, you divide by 2, and square. So it can't be 18. Because 6 divided by 2 is what? And 3 squared is 9. It can only be 9. Okay? So then I subtract 3. x equals minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. That's it. I can't add 3 in the square root of 5 anymore. Right? I can't add 3 to the square root of 5 because the square root of 5 is inside the square root and the 3 is not. Correct. I can't simply, yeah. want to get the x squared be x by itself. Or add, whatever. Mm -hmm. Then you just, no, then you add or subtract that number to it. Correct. And it, that's okay. Then we put it in our square form, right? x plus 3 squared. Right there underneath the square root sign. kind of hard and kind of not. It's kind of confusing, right? Okay. So let's do another one. Oh. Okay, so my x squared is not alone. I need to try and get my x squared alone. I can divide by 3. Those three. Well, first of all, it doesn't matter. I can divide by 3. We don't have to subtract the 150 first before we divide by 3. Because what's 0 divided by 3? Okay. So if I divide by 3, I get what? Minus. 12x plus 50, thank you, equals 0. Minus 50, very good, Rebecca. x squared minus 12x plus something is going to equal minus 50. Right? I'm just going to leave a big hole there. I know I'm going to add something, right? Okay, now I'm going to complete the square. What number is B? B equals negative 12. So what's half is 12. Six, right? And then I square that and it gives me 36. If I add 36 to this side, I have to add 36 to the other side. Yes, always half of it and multiply it by and then square it. Yes. 
because isn't that what, what it said? It said if I have x squared plus bx to complete this square, oh, that's the x squared, okay, hold on. To complete this, to find c, I need to take b divided by 2 and square it, right? All the time. Okay? Never change the 12x. So what's my binomial over here? X minus 6 minus 6. It's minus because this is a, yes. And that equals what? The x. Negative 14. I haven't square rooted it yet, so. We don't go plus or minus till I square root, right? So everybody other than like Carla in this table is really confused. Well, that's, I, that's why I said Carla in this table. Anybody other than Carla in this table? <laughs> Everyone over here doing okay? I think Rebecca's finally got it. Okay. You got it? Okay, so factor this, right? If I factor this, x times x, what two? What are my factors of 36 that add up to be 12? Okay. So then I square root, oops, to leave it a negative. So this is x minus 6 equals plus or minus, what's the square root of 14? Negative 14. It's what, honey? I square root of 14. The square root is not the number divided by 2. No, because a perfect square would be 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, 6 times 6. No, it's I because it has a what in there? A negative. Then there's no I. Inside the square root, it's always I. Okay, then what do I do? Add 6. No, nope, you're just going to leave the square root of 14 there. Plus 6. So X is going to equal 6 plus or minus i square root of 14. I'm tricking myself. Still not square. Anne-Marie? Are you sure? Okay. There is one other way to solve these, you guys. So we'll learn. I think it is easier. No, we'll learn it next time. I think it is easier. It just depends on the person. Some people find this easier and some people find the other one easier. So it depends on each person and on how you think, right? So how your brains are connected, right? So, right? Yes and no, not the yes and the no. Okay. <laughs> okay, last one of this, and then we have one more thing to do. What am I going to do first? Distribute. Okay, so what do I get? 6x squared plus 48x equals 12. Can I complete the square with the 6 in front of this? No, so what do I need to do? Divide everything by 6. Right, so I get x squared plus 8x plus something, right? Equals six. Nice. 
times 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Yeah, you want to know how I got that. Okay, how do I find what that something is? What's my B? So B is going to be 8 divided by 2 squared. need to factor this, right? And what does it factor to? X plus 4 squared. What are the factors of 16 that add up to 8? And they're the same, so I can write it as a squared. Okay. What does this equal? 18. Yay, Carla. 2 plus 16 is 18. You know, that's a hard one for Algebra 2 kids. Okay. <laughs> what are we going to do now? Square root. So I get x plus 4 equals the square root, plus or minus the square root of 9 times 2, right? Isn't that 18, 9 times 2? Right, which would be plus or minus 3 square root of 2. Now what do I do? Minus the 4, great. Square root of 9 is? So x is going to equal negative 4 plus or minus 3 square root of 2. Sorry, I'm writing diagonal across the board. Right, I minus 4 because I want to get x alone. I just, well, I minus it, but yeah. Yeah. That's it. Is x alone? We solve. We're going to do it in a different form. We're going to do exactly the same thing. We're just not going to solve for x, okay? Yeah. So we want to put it in vertex form. So remember back when we were graphing vertex form? We're like graphing again. We're not going to graph. We're just going to put it into that form, okay? We're not graphing. We're just putting it in form. Who remembers what vertex form says? Anyone? So it says y equals a times x minus a squared plus k, right? So we want to get it look like we want to get it to look like that. <laughs> you know, I talk so well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So in order to do that, I need to get my 17 away because I want to complete the square, right? I want to get this. Let's work on this first. So let's get the 17 away. So how do I do that? Very good. Subtract from both sides. So I'm going to get y minus 17 equals x squared minus 8x plus something. Right? This whole thing is going to be, the whole lesson is plus something, right? We want to complete, we want to find something that makes that a square. So what is that going to be? 16 like the last one, I guess, the same way. It's half of 8. Squared. So what does this factor? Okay, right? And now I need to get my y alone. So what do I need to do? Text form? Yeah, done. 
Yes, honey. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Thank you. Sorry for swearing on the recording. <laughs> so I needed to add 16 over here. Woohoo. Because if I add it on this side, I have to add it on the other side. So what does that become? Negative one. So to get a negative one to the other side, I'm going to. Oh, that was weird. It's going to be weird in the back, but my headache has increased. My What's my vertex? What's the vertex of my parabola? Who remembers? This one changes, this one stays the same. Vertex? No. This is exactly what we've been doing, we just didn't solve. Um, it'll be both. This is both. They want both. They want you to write it in vertex form, which is this one, and then they wanted the vertex. So it's both. Both are the answers. You just have to read the directions and ask to see what it wants, right? So some of them want two things. Do you want to do another one of these? Somebody said yes. You guys have to deal with it. Oh, my gosh. If this is a Mesa. Yeah, it's Tuesdays after school. What do we do? We make stuff. What's it's um, right after school till 4, 3.45, so everyone can get the bus. Mesa. Okay, so may, like this year we're making a prosthetic arm for our competition. Yeah, we have to make a prosthetic arm. But usually in, in um, Mesa, like we made a snowman, they had a, a box and they had to get marble from one corner to the other corner in the slowest amount of time possible. Not the fastest, the slowest. They, um, they did uh, card towers where I gave them 100 index cards and they had to make as high a tower as they could that was supporting me as best as possible. I think somebody got, it had to be seven layers. And somebody got five foot things, five foot things. Yeah, cards, uh, three by five index cards. No tape, just cards, that was it. Um, They had to propel a, a um, potion across the ball room using a balloon and tape and a straw and not a paper towel on a paper towel. They had to um, what else did they have to do? They had to make a roller coaster, a marble roller coaster, which if you look down in the um, display case, that's one of the ones that's included. Um, so so we we have stuff and we build stuff and at the end of the year we go roll again. Why not? But it would be my own. Okay, so let's do this problem. Yes, in the whole of Utah, some of Idaho and some of Wyoming. Thank you. 
times f of x plus 4 equals x squared minus 4x plus something. What's that plus something? 4. And so I'm going to add 4 to my other side too, right? So this becomes f of x plus 8 equals what? x subtract 2 squared. And then I subtract 8. What did you say? Square root. Oh, no, we're not solving this time. f of x equals x minus 2 squared minus 8. And my vertex is 2, negative 8. Very good. Solving, you're putting it in vertex form and then finding the vertex. Okay, not hard? It's not too hard, right? I mean, once we get the concept down, the concept is hard to understand. That's why I said it's kind of hard. Once you get the concept down, the work isn't that hard, right? Vertex is just a star. It has nothing to do with the problem. It's a star. Okay. Any other questions? You guys are fabulous. I want to say that. <laughs> Apple Peter. They were throwing chairs around my room last night. <laughs> so we solved quadratic equations by completing the square. Yay. Woohoo. Um, if you need online help, Khan Academy has tons of videos on completing the square. I checked this morning. So if you go to Khan Academy's Google, not Google, search for completing the square, like 10 videos pop up. And you can, s it, it'll say completing square, solving quadratic equations. Some of them are just completing square. So just pick the one that you, that helps you the most. Okay? I wasn't going to limit to you guys to whichever one. So you can, there's like 10 videos. Okay, and then there's your homework. And I'll probably tell you most of your online help will probably come from Khan Academy or Delta Math from now on, although we haven't signed up for a Delta Math account, and I don't know if I will require you to do that or not. I like Khan Academy, though. 